It's TK Friday, and I have another full edit for you today. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing. It is TK Friday, and welcome. Today, it's another full edit. Today's image comes to us from Stephen Ritz. This image was taken in the Bisti Badlands, New Mexico. Really cool image. We're going to do another full edit. And I hope everyone is enjoying the holiday season. And I'd like to wish happy holidays to everyone out there. Well, let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, I am starting out in Lightroom today. I did run a linear profile on this image, made some basic adjustments as far as detail. I have no noise reduction or sharpening on this image. It's a very low ISO. And as far as lens corrections, I always uh, check on remove chromatic aberration as well as enable profile corrections. And I did an 8x10 crop on this image. But other than that, it's ready to go into Photoshop and to be developed using the TK9 plug-in for Photoshop. And now at this point, I just right-click on the image and go to edit in, click edit in Photoshop 2025, but I'm already there. And here we are in Photoshop. Hey, by the way, you can download this image as well as the PDF notes. I have Dropbox links for you in the description right below this video. Click on more, open up that description, scroll down through, and you will find the Dropbox links. If you have an image you would like me to edit on a TK Friday, scroll down further. You'll find a contact me link. Contact me and we can discuss doing one of your images on a TK Friday. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, we're now up to version 3. I highly recommend it. I'll have a link in the description below this video. It'll take you right over to the TK web store. Use my promo code DK15. You'll save 15% off your entire purchase. That will be the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, along with training videos. Sean Bagshaw has some new courses on luminosity masking. I highly recommend them. And check out the TK Magic Mixer plugin for black and white conversions. You can also use it for color images. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff up here, videos and so on. So check it out. Remember, use my promo code DK15, save 15% off your entire purchase. When you use that code, you're supporting my channel because I make a small commission, and this helps me to keep TK Friday videos coming your way. So thank you for that. Now, the first thing I want to do here in Photoshop is do a balance and contrast for foreground and sky. I'll come up to the multi-mask panel and click on the luminosity mask button, and we're going to click on Midtones 3, and all Midtones 3 does is it keeps the lightest lights and the darkest darks from clipping. And then we output that to a color grading tool. Now I need one adjustment for sky and one for foreground. So we're gonna duplicate this by clicking this button on either the combo or CX panel, it just duplicates the layer. By the way, if you have Dave Tillett's actions when you downloaded the latest version of TK9, you can just click this BNC landscape button and be done. But I just wanna show you the long way around so you understand what is happening. The next thing you wanna do is look for this button on the combo or CX panel, hold your shift key down and click it. It'll save out a sky and foreground as channels in Photoshop, which we will need now and later. Next, we go to one of my favorite tools, and that's the layer mask calculator. Hold your command or control key down and click on this button because every time you run it, it automatically closes itself, but that will keep it open because we need it twice. So the first time, what we're going to do on this layer, this is going to be for sky. Click on sky and click the X to intersect the sky with that Midtones 3 mask. You see that? Now we want to click on the first color grading layer and click on foreground and click X to intersect the foreground just like so. And now we can click this X and close the layer mask calculator. But don't you love the layer mask calculator? Hey, by the way, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps to grow my channel. I really appreciate it. And leave comments and questions. I'd love to hear from you. All right, now let's make some adjustments. Well, we're on the foreground, so I'm going to click the mid-tone button. And I want to open up the mid-tones a good bit over to right there, 42. And let's give them a little bit of a color grade. I'm going to click right here. See my cursor here? I'm going to click right here. See how it just warms up the rocks a little bit? Maybe a little warmer. I'll just click right about here. I think that looks good. And now I'll go ahead and click on the shadow button to darken the shadows a bit. So I'm going to darken the shadows up to right there, a minus 26. And now I'll click on the highlight button and I want to open up the highlights to right there, plus 52. Now let me shut off this layer. Here's before 
and here's after. And now we're going to click on the sky adjustment layer. And I'll start out with midtone. So we'll click on the midtone button. And I just want to darken that sky up just a little bit, not much. Over to right there, a minus seven. And let's click about right here. Give that sky a little bit of a blue color grade. Yeah, right there. I think that looks good. And now we'll click on the highlight button. And I just want to open up the highlights just a tiny bit right there, plus eight. Now let me shut off the sky. Here's before and here is after so looking really good so i'll click my overall before after button we started here and now we're here we're off to a really good start don't you love these rocks look at these holes in these rocks here this is like an otherworldly scene i really love this image the bisty badlands and now we move on to step two mid-tone contrast hey by the way Last week, I added timestamps to my video so you could go and find the different steps. You can click on the different steps. And if this is something that is beneficial to you, please let me know in the comments section below and I'll keep doing this. Because if it's not helpful, I won't do it. But if it is, I'll keep doing it. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. And now for the mid-tone contrast. Right now, the color grading tool is in the way. Click the X. That just gets it out of the way. Nothing changes on the color grading layers. And now what we want to do is click on the luminosity mask button. And we're going to click on mid-tones one. I just want a subtle mid-tone contrast. You know, we have mid-tones one, two, and three. They keep getting lighter, but they're all mid-tones. I want mid-tones one. We're going to output that to a curves adjustment layer. We'll click this button. And now we'll make a curves adjustment, but let's make this easy. See the preset up here? This is a drop down right now. It's default, no adjustment. So click the drop down and click strong contrast. And just like that, you have mid-tone contrast. So let me shut off this layer. Here's before, here's after. Just a nice, subtle, beautiful mid-tone contrast. Now for the next step, usually after a mid-tone contrast, I like to just lighten up the mid-tones a little bit. They tend to get a little darker after mid-tone contrast. So what I'll do is click on the luminosity mask button again, click on mid-tones one, output it to a curves adjustment layer, but this time I'll click on the screen blend mode button and watch the image get really light in the mid-tones. Lighter than I want, so what I'm going to do is come to the layer opacity, I'll click here and I'll drag this back to like 30%. Now let me shut this off. Here's before, here's after. Just lightens up the mid-tones a little wee bit. I like to dodge and burn my images, but for this image, I thought I only want to dodge and burn the foreground, but I want to do it globally without, you know, hand painting on dodging and burning, which is really the method I prefer. But I think for this image, a global dodging and burning will be very effective. And let me show you how we can do this. We'll start out by darkening the foreground shadows. Let's come up to the multi-mask panel and click the luminosity mask button. And now you're seeing what a lights one mask looks like. I'll click on darks one. I'm trying to narrow down the shadow range. See the light areas? They're all going to get an adjustment with darks one. Let's go to darks two. See how these areas get darker here. These areas stay light. Here's darks three. That's a little too narrow of a range. So I'm going to go back to darks too. And I think that'll be perfect. Now we need to output this. So I'll output this to a curves adjustment layer. I won't make an adjustment, but I'll click on the multiply blend mode button. And now you see the shadows on the overall image get dark, but I don't want it to happen in the sky. So what we'll do is click on the trusty layer mask calculator button. We'll click sky and we'll click minus to subtract out the sky and now let me shut off this layer here's before here's after that's really nice it's a little too strong let's lower the layer opacity click right here and i'll drag this back to right there 65 percent let me shut this off here's before here's after we've just globally burned all the shadows pretty cool now let's darken up some of these medium shadows like see these shadows right in here and for this we're going to use a zone mask. It's very effective for targeting these type of areas. So let's click on the zone mask button and click this tone like right in here. Click OK. And what we want to do is go ahead and tighten up that selection to somewhere right about here. See how it's targeting these guys? And we're going to lighten that up a little bit to somewhere like right about there. I think that's going to be good. And again, we'll output that to a curves adjustment layer. Let's put it in the multiply blend mode, which will darken. See how it darkens those shadows. Now that's way too much. And it's also in the sky. So what we're going to do is let's take this opacity. I'm going to take it the whole way off. 
like that. So now we don't see anything, but next I want to click on the layer mask calculator, click on sky, click minus to subtract it. And now that sky is out and now slowly build up this opacity and stop where we think it looks good. And so let's start to do that. So we're building it up and I think I'm going to stop right there at 25%. Now let me shut this off. Here's before, here's after. Isn't that cool? Just those medium shadow areas got a little bit darker and that's good and next we're going to lighten up the lighter areas of the foreground now we want to target the lighter tones in the foreground and bring those up in lightness just a little bit we're going to come back to the multi-mask panel click on the luminosity mask button and we need to find a light tone this is lights one here's lights two i'm looking for really light tones here's lights three here's lights four and everything goes dark here but check this out don't forget, you have these color channels that you can go through. Here's what reds look like. See how the lighter tones lighten up a little bit? Let's keep exploring. Here's green. That's not going to be good. Here's blue. Not good. Here's cyan. Definitely not good. Here's magenta. Not good, but here's yellow. Ah, yellow. Look what it's done. It's picked out all these light tones. Perfect. Now we need to output this mask. I will output it to a curves adjustment layer. So I'll click this button. Now when I darkened, I use multiply. When you lighten, you want to use screen. So we'll click on screen and we can see all those areas get light. Now they're way too light and I don't want them in the sky. So what we're going to do is click on our layer mask calculator, click sky, click minus to subtract out the sky. And now I'll take the opacity of this adjustment layer, take it the whole way off. And now let's build it up slowly and stop where we think it looks good. And I think right there, 27%, let me shut this off. Here's before, here's after. So some nice dodging in the light areas of the foreground. Now, let me shut off all three of these layers. This is before the dodging and burning, the global dodging and burning. And here is after. It really brings out a lot of nice character in this foreground. I really like it. Now, the next thing I want to do is see this area of the foreground, like around here, down into here. I just want to slightly darken that up. And let me show you how we can do it. There's a new feature in TK9 called a multiply brush for darkening. Let me show you how we can use it. On either the combo or six panel, look for the multiply button. Hold your shift key down. Click on multiply and you'll note you have a multiply brush. And basically what it is, it's a curves adjustment layer in the multiply darkening blend mode. You get a white brush, you'll be painting on the mask and I want you to paint with 10% opacity. If you don't have 10%, type your one key. And then with a nice soft edge brush, just start to paint on this area here. Don't lift your brush, come down into here and paint across there. Let's go back one more time up into here, over in here, and just get this whole area right in here. Now, let me go ahead and shut this off. Here's before, and now here is after. Isn't that nice? And basically what it's doing is it's just balancing out this bottom area here, keeping our eye from moving over this way too much. It just evens it up a little bit. Again, here's the before, and now the after. Now, to make sure this is not getting into the sky, because I probably painted into the sky, and I don't think it's hurting anything, but you could click on your layer mask calculator, click sky, and click minus and subtract out the sky. For the next step, we're going to soften the sky, just make it a little more dreamier, not too much, but I think it's going to look really good. So here's what we do. We're going to use a TK action. If your actions aren't open, click a TK button on either the combo or CX panel. Look for clarity and click on it. I want to increase the radius to like like right there, 53.1, click OK. Now it's doing the opposite of what I want. But if I invert this clarity layer, it will soften. So on the Combo CX panel, look for this button right here, click it. And now note the whole image gets soft, but I only want it in the sky. So what do we do? We come to our trusty layer mask calculator, click on it, click sky, click apply. And now it's only in the sky. So let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after. See, just a nice little dreamy look to that sky. I think it really adds to this image. Just a couple more steps and we're done. Next up, we want to add some detail to the foreground. And for that, we'll use the camera raw filter. So on the Combo 6 panel, click on cam raw this will stamp all your layers together give you a smart object and open the camera raw filter 
And what we want to do is go to effects. If effects aren't open, just click on effects. And what we want to do is bring up the texture. And I want to bring it up to right there, 40. Let's give it some clarity. We'll take that up to right there, 15. Click OK. That'll send us back into Photoshop. If you need to go back and readjust, just double click on the camera raw filter here. It'll send you back into the filter and you can make some adjustments. Now, I only want this on the foreground, so we'll click on our layer mask calculator. You could use the combo or CX panel. Click foreground, click this button to apply it. And now let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after. Now we only have that beautiful detail on the foreground. Now the final step will be to add a vignette to the overall image. If your TK actions aren't open, click your TK button on the combo or CX panel. Click on vignette. This is a basic vignette. A Gaussian blur comes up. I always just click OK. And now we have a vignette with a default opacity of 30%. For this image, I think it's perfect. Let me shut off the vignette. Here's the before and here is the after. And I think that is it. Now, the only thing I'm noticing is on the right hand side of this image on the foreground, see this light area here and here. I'd like to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is click this button to add a blank pixel layer and click on my remove tool and I have this set for sample all layers. And what I want to do is just paint over this light area right in here and just get rid of that. Well, there it is, everyone. Let's see where we started from on my combo panel. I'll click my before after button. We started here and now we end up here. I do hope you give this edit a try. Don't forget, you can download the image and the PDF notes. Well, there it is, everyone. Another TK Friday comes to an end. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. By the way, I want to wish all of my TK Friday audience and my Joy of Editing audience a very Merry Christmas and a very happy and prosperous New Year. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification, click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.